All right, for this question, this is a question that one of our students um, sent to me saying, hey, can you help me solve this um, uh, within the algebra uh, course? So most times when you see absolute value questions, usually you see an absolute value only on one side. So it gets a little tricky when you have the absolute value on both sides like this one does. So all you have to do is you just pick, you want to, you want to pick one side that's going to have your positive and negative, and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So essentially, I'm going to write this question as is, right? Um, and make it equal to this other side. Yes, that's x plus 4 over 2. And this is what I call the positive case, okay? And then I look at my negative case. I look at 2x over there. I write the same thing, but this time I'm going to introduce a negative. So actually, let me pick a different color for that. I'm going to introduce a negative into the setup. 3x plus 4 over 2. Now, this is no different from the way I probably taught the other um, absolute value questions. So the fact that you have absolute value on both sides, don't let that freak you out. It's it's still, you're going to still deal with it the same by creating a positive case and a negative case. Okay. So in my positive case here, I just solve it as is. Now, obviously, the thing I want to do because they're dividing, um, because it's divided by 3 here and divided by 2 here, um, there are a number of ways you could do it. You can find a common denominator or you could cross multiply. I think I'm going to cross multiply in this case. So I'm going to cross multiply that and I'm also going to do it here over. So when I cross multiply on this side, this 2 will go up here and this 3 will come up here. So when this 2 comes up here, I'm going to get 2 of 2x minus 5 equal to when this 3 comes here, it's 3 of 3x. Okay. And then over here, I'm going to get this 2 to come here, be 2 of 2x minus 5. And then over here will be minus, this 3 will come here, 3 of 3x plus 4. So again, I'm cross multiplying, getting this 3 to multiply here, this 2 to multiply here, this 2 to multiply here, this 3 to multiply here. And then let's solve it. So this 2 will go through this guy and this guy. This 3 will multiply through this guy and also this guy. So when this 2 multiplies here, you get 4x minus 10. Here is going to be 9x plus 12. Um, and then I want to, and then same thing here, 4x minus 10, and this will be careful now here. You're going to have minus 3 times that and also minus 3 times 4. So minus 3 times this is minus 3, 9x, minus 3 times this is minus 12. So now I want to get like terms together. So 9x, 4x. So the trick I always use here is to always tell students, move the smaller value. So if I want to get 4x and 9x together, I move the smaller of the two. So 4x is a smaller value, I move it towards 9x. Now you might say, you may say, why are you moving the smaller one? What's the significance of that? It's because if you move the smaller one towards the larger one, the operation will end up being positive instead of being negative. So like if you look at the, if you look at the, and I'm about to violate what I just said in a second here, if you look at this minus 10 and 12, you kind of want to move this 10, negative 10 towards this 12, because negative 10 is a smaller value than 12. But because I've already moved this 4x over here, Right? You don't want to end up moving both of them in the same direction. So I'm just going to do that here. Because whatever direction you've moved one in, you kind of want to move the other in the other direction. So you keep them on two separate sides of the equation. So this is going to be 9x minus 4x without 4x coming over. When this 4x comes over here, it becomes a negative. And then this 12, when it comes over here, it becomes the negative 10 is, was there before. This plus 12 now becomes a negative 12 there. So over here, do the same thing. I'm going to have 4x here and I have negative 9x here. I probably want to move that negative 9x over because negative 9 is smaller than 4x. Plus, I always want the x's to be positive anyway. So it's going to end up be 4x plus 9x equal to, and then over here, I'm going to just move the negative 10. Again, if you move one in one direction to the left, move the other one to the right. So that at least they're on opposite sides. So when this negative 10 comes over here, it becomes positive. So this is negative 2. 4x, 9x is uh, 11x there. Then this is negative 22. This is 9x minus 4 is 5x. Divide by 5 on both sides. So this x is negative 22 over 5. And then over here, I divide by 11 on both sides to get the x alone. So this is x equal to negative 2 over 11. So if you look at, um, actually, you know what? Did I do that? I, I added this wrong. 9 plus... Uh, 9 plus, for 4x plus 9 is 13. I don't know how I made that mistake. So I'm going to take that out. So this is going to be 3. And then 
this is three. So this is 13x over here, not 11. Um, but the, you know, the rest of the math still holds. And so this is true. So this is 13x and then you divide 13 on both sides. And that is it. So you have two answers, which is what we usually get in a in a absolute value question, there's usually two answers to have. So this is how you solve this question with two absolute values. It's not, it isn't that much different. Um, you're still going to get the same thing and stuff. For those of you that are saying, okay, well, why did you pick the right one to be the positive and negative case? Well, if you make the left one positive and negative case, you would get the same answers. Again, it's just going to be a duplicate. So you realize that you really there's really no point. Just pick one side as your positive and negative, and then you're good. That's it.